All right, I'll go ahead and call to order the May 21st, 2024 Pendleton Board of Zoning mm -hmm. Appeals. Mm -hmm. We'll do a roll call starting to my left. Yeah, Robert Jones here. Kyle Eichler. Jenny Sisson. James King. And <clears throat> we have one member absent, but yeah. we do have a quorum. And then I'll entertain a motion to approve the previous meeting minutes from March. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Motion, do we have a second? I'll second that. Uh, all those in favor, I was going to abstain because I wasn't here. Is that That's correct. Okay. So all those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Minutes are approved. On to old business. We have some findings of fact. <clears throat> CU 0319-2024-01-02 and V 0319-2024-03. Yeah. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Um, so uh, we do have three findings of facts uh, to be uh, presented, reviewed uh, this evening. Um, I don't know if you, any of you had a chance to even look through those, but I can go through those. Be more than happy to give you a quick synopsis of each one of those um, before they are approved. Uh, we had three petitions back at our March meeting, and uh, we had two conditional conditional use um, requests, and then we also had a variance in developmental standards as well. So for the first one that we have before you was filed by Keith Bucklew. Uh, it is a piece of property south of town. And what that petitioner was seeking um, from this board is to be able to operate a greenhouse and plant nursery in a rural residential zoning district. So for that uh, request, they have been and had been operating a roadside stand for the last two to three seasons. And so they wanted to make it more of a year round permanent operation. And in order to do so, they needed to be able to kind of um, upgrade that, uh, enhance that to then a, a greenhouse and a plant nursery uh, operation on that site. So just uh, kind of quickly here, the board did determine that it was not uh, in a negative impact on public health and safety, that expansion of that existing business uh, was well uh, received and supported. Um, to being that uh, year-round uh, permanent uh, operation. They are only selling native plants, shrubs, and trees, as well as their chemicals for herbicide is going to be limited to any type of uh, natural products only. Uh, the conditional use uh, was deemed that it would not be injurious to use uh, and enjoyment of other properties nearby. If you recall back in the 2021 zoning map, uh, these properties prior there too were all to the east and the west and the subject property was deemed a planned business zoning district. But then in that zoning change, because of the subject property and the one to the west uh, was not being utilized at commercially, they only changed the lateral move to the east properties to a general business and then kept or changed those uh, to, to rural residential, which at the time the property was purchased by the current owner, they had intended to use it as a plant nursery and a greenhouse. So they were kind of already in the makings of that. Um, they've been in the business for a long time. Uh, their setbacks, height, the uh, requirements, maximum pervious surface standards were all met. There is heavy tree line on this property. There's even a 3.5 wooded acres in the center of the property that gives some added screening uh, to those properties around. And they're going to limit to just seasonal demand and daylight hours uh, in operation um, for that property uh, and that business. Also, uh, the conditional use was not deemed to impede uh, the development or improvement of the surroundings uh, properties as they can naturally enjoy and be uh, permitted to do so. And um, for that, uh, any developmental standards, uh, building codes and whatnot are going to be anticipated to be uh, met. Um, they actually had filed it since we have uh, last met. Um, their, per their building permit for their additional greenhouse. And then they are working on trying to identify what structure they wanted to use for an office building. Um, but we anticipate it to be well-maintained, well-manicured, um, as well as not to create any negative impacts on surrounding property. Um, any uh, utilities, access um, uh, to the road, any drainage needs and so forth are all being met uh, currently. The new pond that they installed on that north end of the parcel has been approved by the Madison County Soil and Water uh, Conservation District and IBM as well through the general permit process. 
And uh, the entrance to the property is deemed safe. It's wide enough to be able to channel any traffic that's coming in and out of the property uh, safely. As far as uh, any uh, measurements or changes to the ingress, egress, none are deemed necessary. And there's an internal driveway um, that is to service then the commercial uh, operations of the greenhouse, uh, which is 100 feet off of the uh, State Road 67 there. And there also is a parking lot that is uh, well sufficient to be able to house any patrons that come in. The conditional use was approved by this board. Uh, no objections uh, uh, or remonstrance was received by public. Uh, and also it was approved as presented with no conditions. So that is the first findings of fact uh, for your consideration tonight. Uh, if you do approve that, um, they uh, you have a copy on your uh, Google Drive, as well as there's a hard copy there for signing after the end of the meeting. Any questions on this one? Jeff, do we need a formal vote on this or to accept, the to accept the findings? All right, I'll entertain a motion to accept the findings. So, fact, we'll make a motion to accept the findings. Of fact. Second. second, add a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the motion carries on to B CU 0319 2024 02. Uh, this petition was filed by Sheila Curtis. She is the owner uh, and operator of Dogs and Suds there at Fall Creek Corners. They are off of uh, State Road 67 and US 36. Uh, she has been in operation for 20 years and uh, operating a public kennel. Uh, it was actually a legal non-conforming use for several years. It was just one of those uh, unique circumstances where that conditional use was not obtained. Um, but in, um, in just and not intentionally, um, but uh, she wanted to expand that land use into the suite uh, to the east. And so in doing so, she came to seek that conditional use to be formally established, um, as well as to be authorized to expand into that second unit. Uh, the board uh, deemed it to not be in conflict with public health and safety standards. Uh, and um, the fact that um, there was gonna be some great improvements and enhancements to that suite, the existing suite one, as well as the existing suite two, they were gonna open up that shared wall and to be one unit only. And with the um, high focus on daycare, play care and grooming services, uh, there's gonna be some overnight uh, stay as well as already existing, but there's not gonna be any new changes to the services that are currently being provided. Uh, the uh, the conditional use was deemed that it would not be injurious to the use and enjoyment of other property owners or even the tenants within the building. There's a total of seven within that building. There was no objections received by the town of Pendleton or the petitioner, and she is going to be working with TWC uh, contractors. They are a specialty company and pet care facilities, uh, so they are very familiar with to be able to minimize those um, odor, sound, and waste uh, control uh, measures to be able to eliminate uh, any disturbance on those nearby uh, tenants. Also, as far as conditional use, it was deemed that it would not impede negatively on the development and improvement of surrounding properties. And um, the fact that this improvement was going to be limited to the footprint, the interior footprint of that suite too. There was not going to be any significant changes to the outside. Um, and uh, there are proper dumpster usage, um, routines, uh, waste control that she was able to prove to the board at the last meeting. And again, that uh, contractor uh, in specializing was a comfort, you know, uh, in uh, giving this board uh, what they needed to be able to know that what was going to be improved was going to be adequate uh, and to satisfaction. As far as utilities, they have all the utilities, public utilities that they need on the site to be able to accommodate this growing business. Uh, there is also a large parking lot uh, that is well sufficient to be able to support that growth and any long stay parking. But for the most part, there is a drop off uh, pickup service for the most part for her business. Uh, no modifications uh, were deemed necessary for the ingress egress to that property. Uh, and, uh, and again, that parking lot uh, well supports then those seven units there. The current uh, tenant uh, is a um, event um, kind of a, a 
uh, whether it's showers or um, graduation, uh, open houses and so forth. And so you'll see that there's a lot of traffic there that it already accommodates uh, well. Um, this uh, growth in her business wouldn't even come close to that. So I think we felt very comfortable with that. Um, and then also years back, there was a pet sales in that suite as well. Uh, the conditional use was approved. Uh, the remodeling and the reconstruction measures that's going to take place uh, will meet UDO standards. There's no objections, um, but there was an approval with one, uh, a couple of conditions. So the first condition was that the plan design needed to meet uh, building codes for the state of Indiana and conditions as well, subject to their state engineer release and acceptance. And then prior to the expansion, the petitioner was asked and she agreed to this condition to verify with the health department that there was no distance requirement from food establishment for her particular public uh, kennel uh, service. So uh, she agreed upon that and that will be verified before she is allowed to expand. Uh, that suite is still being utilized and I don't know how long, but there's not been any modifications or any updates um, to this conditional use uh, at this time. Questions? All right, I'll make a motion to accept the findings of fact for CU 0319-824-02. So move. With a second. Second. All right, motion in the second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, on to VO 319-2024-03. This is our third and final findings of facts for tonight. This was regarding the community health network that's going to be um, uh, developing over there up off uh, close to I-69. This is an institutional zoning district. Um, I believe that the one that I sent out earlier this morning, if anyone caught that, it said industrial. So I apologize. I caught that later today and got that corrected for you. Um, but basically, the request or ask was pretty simple. Um, there was reasons. Um, unique to the property as well as some uh, accommodations for their patients as well that justified having more than the 50% of the parking in the front uh, of the building versus the side and the rear. So uh, specifically, they were asking for 94 parking spots to be in the front versus 63 that would have been allowed naturally by the UDO, uh, which then put about a 75-25 split. Um, the approval was uh, deemed that it would not be injurious to public health and safety. It created uh, uh, an efficient use of the land because it's medical related. We had patients uh, and those uh, patrons that were going to be anticipated to have medical conditions. It would shorten the distance to the walk up to the facility. And um, it also provided safe ingress and uh, egress. Uh, final site development functionality will also meet engineered emergency and public safety standards. Uh, as far as those values around this particular property, the intended use was supported by the comprehensive plan, the I-69 uh, master or interchange master plan. Uh, with the parking in front, uh, it also increases the visibility off of I-69. And uh, there's also some heavy buffering that was being planned in this particular site, as well as some drainage needs with the large extension pond in the rear, because that was a predetermined stormwater management plan from the county for several years back, uh, we found out in this process. And then there was a natural bioswell at the front. Uh, so there's quite a bit of screening there that uh, would um, be able to kind of uh, screen in a lot of that uh, additional uh, parking spaces. As far as, um, uh, the uh, public right-of-way, um, we've got three sides um, that uh, are uh, around streets as well. Uh, there's deep setbacks as well to uh, contend with uh, on this uh, variance uh, request. Uh, the um, minimum uh, was asked, um, the minimum needed to provide sufficient um, flow to the site. So. Uh, and also, they did not uh, do this to correct a hardship. Um, that was the uh, last kind of standard that's met for a variance from developmental standards. And um, because the, the site is currently vacant, so they had not done anything until uh, they got this approved. This was approved as presented um, based on the fact that architectural and developmental standards will be met. But there was one condition, and the condition was that uh, requested by your board that the town of Pendleton planning staff was to assure that the site plan was adequately addressing a separation of emergency services from then, say, the 
uh, the lobby area. And so they have done that. That is uh, a couple of renderings there. It is on your Google Drive. I also have a hard copy here as well. Um, they are going to utilize the rear for most of their um, uh, uh, transporting needs um, that come up unexpectedly. They're going to have a no parking zone uh, in that rear. But then there's also, um, they've kind of rerouted some of the layouts of internally to where then if they happen to just can't avoid coming in that front door, how they can negate then that lobby area and go around to get into the back. So that uh, was a solution that we felt like mm -hmm. that uh, met the uh, desires of this board and also uh, uh, in uh, uniformity with our fire department and, and what their requests were. All right, sounds good. Any other mm -hmm. questions for staff? I know, I think the things were addressed. Yeah, good. and we good. appreciate you guys bringing mm -hmm. that up. It worked out great. I wonder, right. wonder if they had anticipated in any way or are they we did have quite a bit of discussion about that, about the separate entrance. Yeah. Location. Yeah. yeah. It, I think the legal counsel was here representing them. Mm -hmm. So they weren't right. for sure how far and, and what had already been accommodated, mm -hmm. yeah. but it was a very, very quickly, um, you know, accepted yeah. task. Um, they, uh, they took that on and they felt immediately, I, I actually had sent them over the findings of facts for the review right after our meeting. And they felt that they were very comfortable moving forward with the site mm -hmm. development plan. And so it, it, it did with a quick turnaround for them. So. Good deal. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I will entertain a motion to accept the findings of fact for VU 03-19-2024-03. I'll make a motion to accept this. Second. I'll second that. All right. Motion in the second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On to new business. V0521-2024-01. 450 Old State Road 132. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we just have one new petition for you tonight uh, that we are going to be presenting here. Um, just uh, like uh, Chairman said, this is regarding uh, property at 450 Old State Road 132, just a little north of town here in the uh, north of the Residential Core Conservancy. Um, and um, we do have applicant Henry Farrar here. He is present here with us uh, this evening. He has met all of his filing requirements, including the noticing requirements. Uh, no objections have been received by the town of Pendleton uh, or received any type of feedback, you know, regarding this uh, request. Uh, we'll start off tonight. I'm going to share with uh, the board the site details. We'll go into kind of what the variance application, what is being asked. And then I could either go right into a staff analysis and then open it up for questions for myself or Mr. Farrar to answer or add any comments. We definitely welcome him to do that if he'd like. Um, and then we'll just uh, wrap up and then allow you all to uh, uh, analyze the, it against the criteria that's set forth uh, now for the board to consider tonight. So just on the first slide here, we've got the current use and site details. Uh, this property is zoned single family residential. It's the largest lot for residential. It's the SF1. This property is just slightly under one acres at one, or excuse me, at 0.92 acres. It's a one story ranch home that's used for his personal homestead residential dwelling. This subject property, it features large mature trees, as you'll see in the next slide that we'll, that we'll get to here momentarily. Um, but as, in this slide here, I wanted to point out um, how um, much agriculture land surrounds this particular parcel. Uh, matter of fact, it's an Ag 1, our largest ag, uh, property uh, zoning district that uh, surrounds his property on three sides. He does have a single family. Uh, across the street, there is some even to the west, kind of northwest, there's some additional single family properties that's not shown on the screen here, but then also along the uh, eastern border there, um, there are other single family SF1 uh, properties in close proximity. Um, but the area that uh, is outlined in red is this particular that, um, property that is owned by Mr. Farrar. Uh, and then also we have Red Oak Lane that is really close across the road that has some other residential um, properties that are a little bit farther south uh, from his. Uh, if you want to slide to the second, uh, next page. 
So um, the proposed site layout, we'll start there, the accessory structure, detached garage. Um, you'll see there that is kind of uh, outlined in black. It's on the uh, northwest corner of this particular um, property. There is, a, we'll get into what he is asking here in a moment there. Um, but then just south of that is a new concrete slab uh, that uh, he would also be installing. And you'll see here what the utilities are and where they're marked on the property. Uh, the pink is there is the frontier for internet services. Uh, the red line is outlined overhead uh, electric lines that service um, is electric to the home. Uh, they are connected there at then also the northwest uh, corner uh, rear of his, uh, his uh, home there off the roof. Then to the east, you've got first the yellow line represents the gas uh, line, and then the green line is the sewer line there for the property. As far as for the structure that he is proposing to build, and he has an interest of building, it sits about 125 feet off of Old State Road 32, 132. As far as for the setback to the west, it sits off about 20 feet uh, from the west uh, property line. And then on the rear property line there to the north, it sits um, off about nine feet uh, from, from that uh, most northern lot line. As far as the setbacks that are established within the UDO, uh, he well uh, meets those, um, which are the rear and uh, side setbacks are only five feet for an accessory structure. Uh, this is a collector road, and so that is 40 feet for a front setback. Um, and then, of course, then even from the east property line, I think he's about 146 feet off of that. So, um, but uh, what uh, petitioner is asking is, um, and I'm seeing also, too, that there is no utility conflicts uh, with this ask. Um, but he is wanting to construct a 36-foot uh, wide by 56-wide accessory structure detached garage on that uh, northwest corner of his parcel, uh, which is permitted uh, for his zoning district. And as indicated, it well fits within the setback requirements that are established by our UDO. Um, he is asking to be permitted to be able to permit a, an accessory structure, but with the height of 17 feet. The UDO caps it at 15 feet for SF1, um, but 17 feet would be just at the peak of the structure. Um, the walls are, we'll get to that here in a moment, are only 12 feet, but then as it uh, angles up to the peak, then it gets up to the height of 17. So he is seeking a variance in developmental standards to allow then that difference of that two feet. Um, so, um, uh, to be able to accommodate for his intended uses. So those in uses that he would like to utilize this accessory structure for personal storage, and as well as he would like to be able to accommodate that height to be able to accommodate an auto, um, uh, uh, automotive lift for personal care um, of his car, his vehicles, and, and maintenance. So it would not be any type of business operation. This would be only for his personal use, but he would like to, and that's why he's coming to the board, is to be able to have a height that can accommodate that, uh, that lift. So Stephanie, if you want to go ahead and go then to the, the next slide here, uh, petitioner provided us with elevations here. Uh, you'll see here on the uh, south elevation, this elevation is in the top right corner here. That is what you'll see from Old, Old State Road 132. So that will be facing the main public roadway. There are two 12 by 10 uh, doors. Uh, then there are two 2 by 3 windows, uh, which give a, a nice uh, aesthetic look uh, to the structure. To the right, the top right corner there is the north elevation, just shows that there is at the peak, there's 17 feet, uh, and then there's 36 feet wide. And that will be on then the north end of his uh, property line. Then on the west elevation, we'll be seen from the west. Uh, you'll see here that's 12 foot uh, up to, um, to the um, top of the wall and the width is 56 feet uh, there. And so that would be seen then from the west property line. Then on the east elevation, in which is be pretty much open to the back, his backyard, uh, he'll have a service door, which is about three feet by 6.6 uh, .6 feet, and then an additional bay area of an eight by seven there. That'll be open to his, his backyard. This uh, structure is a post-frame building 
the usage of a two by eight treated grade board is going to be what's going to construct uh, this, uh, this, um, this barn. The, um, that is uh, very uh, well um, uh, used for uh, slow decay and rot. Um, they weather very well. Uh, two by sixes will be used for the roof gable. And then it will be then anchored uh, with a concrete floor and foundation. And uh, he is going to, he's up to go, as you see, the white uh, siding uh, with the black trim, the black uh, wainscot, which is 36 inches high, and then the black roof. The material that will be used for this structure, uh, if it is approved, is standing seam metal panels. It is with the concealed fasteners. That is a permitted material for the SF1 uh, zoning district. Those are kind of pretty much uh, the details of the structure itself. In comparison to the primary structure, the primary structure is 14.6, I believe, is what uh, he indicated at the top peak. So you're looking about a two and a half foot difference between what um, this, uh, this structure would sit a little bit over his ranch home. Um, however, it is subordinate to his primary structure. The primary structure is about 200 plus square foot larger than what this structure is. Um, and then the impervious surface maximum is 30% for his property. Even with the additional concrete pad and the structure, he's still only at 17%. So he is well under that impervious surface maximum. So. So that's kind of the details of what this petitioner is seeking, the details um, of the structure itself, um, the site details. If you'd like, I could go into staff analysis, or if you want me to pause, if you want to ask questions for myself or Mr. Farrar, we can do that as well. Any questions, sir? No, just a side note, on when we came up with that 15, was, do you remember that rationale? I don't know, it looked like I looked at the other zones. Rural residential and all those were smaller. So, you know, I, I know on some of those we had to just kind of make a. I think if you're thinking of a subdivision lot, maybe. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and and I think that we 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 went with that number just to kind of see you know what how that's going to shake out if we're going to get a frequent amount of requests for you know something higher you know we may plan commission could be looking at making a modification of that. Um, but, um, but yeah, I think that just trying to be conservative and not have know, the secondary and, be larger than the yes. for the most part than the primary. Through the primary. Yeah. And just kind of allow it to come through the board of zoning appeals and, and just let it ride that way for a while. I just remember we had a lot of discussion and it, it just mm -hmm. didn't click on why a bit raising. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I know that we did change the calculation. Uh, used to, it was midway between the top of the wall and uh, the peak was that height variance, um, but now we go up to the peak of the highest peak of the structure. Uh, so that did change a little bit as well. I don't have any other questions. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Farr, do you have anything you want to add or you're good? Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. So the function of the planning staff is to analyze the petition against all of our planning documents, as well as any existing conditions or variances placed upon this site to present facts and analysis. And based on this analysis, uh, here are our following comments that we would like to present. So we feel that the variance will not pose an endangerment to the public health, safety, and general welfare. The setbacks of uh, the bulk and use and maximum impervious surface standards are all will be met if this is uh, approved. The height variance, which is again limited to the peak of the structure, is minimal, uh, just at the two feet and is only at the 2.5 feet above the primary structure. The proposed height matches those uh, around, uh, including the agricultural properties. We have some large um, barns there. We also have two-story homes. So around that area, um, we feel that would fit in uh, that uh, area that, you know, it is kind of rule setting uh, uh, for the most part. The post frame accessory structure with that cement floor and foundation with the two added windows up front, uh, that two tone exterior is also with that uh, wainscot uh, that's going to be the entire circumference of that structure will give enhanced uh, aesthetics. And then uh, the access point uh, for the driveway and um, 
that same existing driveway will service this additional uh, garage uh, and no additional utilities um, will be needed or in conflict to existing utilities. I know the only thing that we have um, that uh, he will need to run some electric to that barn, that's the only utility that he is going to plan to have there. It's not going to be any restrooms or any plumbing. Um, he will simply, once he gets uh, through this, uh, this stage, if it gets approved, then he'll go to the building permit application and he'll go to the utility office just to coordinate with our electric department to get that done. Um, but no uh, conflicts are anticipated. There are large mature trees on the site that will provide some natural screening. <laughs> and as well, there is uh, that one large ag uh, property that is 95 acres that kind of hugs, uh, surrounds this uh, subject parcel. Indiana Building Code and other development standards of our UDO are anticipated to be met. Um, and again, if approved uh, tonight, uh, we would then send him on through the building permit process uh, for this. So you have the five criteria that's outlined there below to review as a board and make your decision. All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm curious, um, you got a lot of trees on the property, are you gonna have to cut any down to Build the building or yeah, there's a way, sir. You could go ahead. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, so we actually we got a little ahead of ourselves already. There's one we already had removed. Um mm -hmm. it had tree roots that were coming up. They had planted the tree deep enough when they planted it 50 plus years ago, uh, when the house was put in, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, but the tree roots are all coming up and we just we took it down already just to get it out of the way. Do you have any more you gotta take down? No. All right. Yeah, just out of curiosity. It's hard, they're hard to see on this because uh, yeah. uh, the aerial photo was taken when there's no leaves, so yeah. it's hard to spot. I think there was probably maybe seven or eight pretty yeah. large mature trees. Yeah, that kind of surrounded. But I think in that northwest corner, that's probably the one yep. that we had to take down. Yep. Well, I guess we'll just step through the five criteria for the variance so we can start with the approval will not be injurious to the public health safety morals and well general welfare of the community and so staff spoke about uh, their opinion about that and you know they're not creating extra traffic it's for personal use uh, it's surrounded by large lot agriculture and zoning districts that allow taller buildings than this one and so you know for those reasons i think that this criteria is bad is there any other board discussion to and that extra two feet is just to accommodate the car lift mostly. Yes. Mm -hmm. I could see that. Well, that's all it is. Well, usually when they, I don't know how you're having it constructed, but they usually put a, the right heavier I beams in, mm -hmm. like if you're planning it in advance, so that those take up more space. This is steel beam. That's the floor lift, right? It's the hard. Just a car lift. Yes. Oh, going. you're not doing the. No, it's just a car lift. It, it bolts right into the concrete. Yeah. I was in my head. I was thinking. Like lift hoist. up with the. Hoist. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Just, are you a hobbyist then? Or yes. Working on cars. What yes, sir. Do? Yeah, I got a Jeep that just empty every pocket. Is the Jeep. <laughs> so I got that. It needs a lot of work. Yeah. Okay. And I got my pickup truck and her car. I like to do the work on. All right. I'm weird about other people doing the work on. Do you have any plans on as far as uh, expanding beyond that? To no. Where you have cars sitting around the building? No. I have a boat. I'm going to put inside to keep it out of my yard. I actually, that's my father right there. I have it sitting in his driveway right now. And I don't think he really likes that too much. So you really need cars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, everything. I just got uh, my Jeep, the boat, possibly my pickup truck. Sometimes I'd like to put inside there, keep it out mm -hmm. of the elements. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, because you don't anticipate this point in time as far as getting into a business to this no. location as far as no, I just okay. just our personal belongings and all my all my toys I bring home. I have a couple quads and stuff that's also his house, but I plan on keeping those out of his house. He's got the woods I like to ride in, all that stuff. So. But no, nothing else, no businesses, nothing, just strictly hobby and storage. Good. All right, second item, the use and value of the area adjacent to the property included in the variance will not be affected in a substantially adverse manner. 
And so I think we touched on it, you know, it's surrounded by a large lot of agriculture. So you know, it should impact that. Similar buildings around? Yep. Uh, number three, the strict application of the terms of the ordinance will result in practical difficulties in the use of the property. So, you know, building a building tall enough to, to do the things that he wants to do, you know, the ordinance makes that difficult. And, you know, on to the fourth one, the minimum necessary, you know, it's only going from 15 to 17. So I feel like that is the minimum needs to get the lift in there. Mm -hmm. And number five, the variance granted does not correct a hardship caused by a former or current owner of the property. You know, the building doesn't exist yet, so it, you know, it's not a correction of a hardship. So I think it, it appears to meet all five criteria based on our discussion and staff's analysis. And is there any other board discussion? I agree. Any other comments from the petitioner? Oh, I don't have it either. I'm sorry, I'm not talking into this very well. I do not have anything. Okay. Uh, with that being said, I guess I will entertain a motion. Oh, one other comment. So you said it's going to be standing seam and not exposed fastener? It, no, it's going to be concealed fastener. It's going to be okay. concealed fastener. Yeah, sorry. Is, I, if I said that wrong. Is the exposed fastener not permitted to use? Correct. <laughs> okay. We can oh, okay. Plan, yeah. okay. In our plan. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. It's been within the last two years. Yeah, no, we're Okay. Uh, well, uh, with all that being said, I will entertain a motion to adopt the findings of fact as presented based on our discussion and staff's analysis and uh, approve B0521 2024 01. Can I make a motion to approve B0521? One two oh two four dash one. Second. All right. Motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Mm -hmm. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's the end of the agenda, right? Yeah. All right. Next meeting is June eighteenth. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All right. Meeting adjourned. Here we go.